Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh. I still use junk on eBay. Today we are talking about books and I'm going to take it through my... Hang on guys. The dog is like right up here trying to get in my face. She doesn't want some attention. I'll just fat her a little bit while we're doing this. Anyways, we are going to be going through my full process of selling used books on eBay. I sell also a good bit on Amazon FBA, but today we're really just going to be focusing on the eBay portion of the business. I'm going to be taking you through my full process here between sourcing books, sorting books, listing books, storing books, because you gotta store them after they're listed, and finally shipping books. We're gonna be taking you through that full process today. Everything I do, all the tips and tricks I have, things that help me be way more, way quicker with the process. How about that? Way more efficient. There's the word I'm looking for. Because if you are not doing this efficiently and you are going through all those books, it can take a lot of time. So yeah, we're gonna be going through that process. Um, first thing I do wanna talk about though is sourcing books. We're just gonna kinda of talk about that right here. I have already, as you can see, sourced all these books. Now there's two main ways of sourcing books, at least two main categories. Number one is cherry picking. That is where you are going to thrift stores, garage sales, estate sales, wherever there are books, wherever books are for sale, picking out the best books they have and just purchasing those and selling those. That is the best thing to do if you are just getting started. If you're just getting started, you should not start with an entire trailer load of books. You should start with just a couple of books, either books you have around your house, pick out the best books you have there that you are willing to sell, or by going to thrift stores and picking out the best books they have there. How you do that is the same way that we will see as we sort these books, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. So cherry picking, that's what I suggest as you are getting started, or even for a lot of people, you know what? A lot of people are very successful doing just that. Honestly, doesn't work good for me and my family and my situation because then you guys spend a lot more time sourcing. I would rather spend more time doing things that are here at home instead of things that are away from home. And that's why I've chosen to source books that way. So second way is bulk books. Bulk books, there's one. Do you hear the dog panting right here? She is just so happy right now. I don't know if you do. Hopefully that's not making the video terrible. Anyways, the second way of sourcing books is bulk books. And the number one factor in that is relationships. Building relationships with peoples and places that have lots and lots of books. More books than they know what to do with. So there's a few places like that. Libraries, number one. A lot of libraries will take donations of books and then maybe have sales or maybe just try and get rid of them. Building relationships there. Number two is thrift stores, building relationships there with thrift store managers or employees. That's how I got these. And then the third big place is really like estate sell companies, building relationships there, taking all their books and possibly CDs, DVDs, all their media and doing that. Those are the three biggest places where there's typically lots and lots of books. Other things might be like clean out companies that are paid to clean out houses, stuff like that. So. Think of places where there's lots of books, build relationships there, and that's how bulk buying of books really works. As long, well, you can go lower down that list and buy books from like somebody like me, bulk books from somebody like me, but those aren't the books you want. You don't want books, bulk books from somebody that already sells books. You want bulk books at the source, that way the best books are still in there. You don't want to be buying a Gaylord of books that are just from some Amazon seller that has a few other duds might be okay for you because then most of their duds are, for them are still gonna be duds for you. Hopefully that makes sense. Go as close to the initial source as possible. Um, you can also advertise for free bulk, free book pickups on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp, Nextdoor, places like that. Um, one big thing is make business cards. Go to Vistaprint like 15 20 maybe 30 bucks i don't know they're always running different sales get some business cards that's how i got these is i dropped my business card off like half a dozen times and now they just call me whenever they have books today i walked in there walked around the store for 30 seconds found the manager she's like you want to buy books i was like yes i do we loaded the trailer and was, the amount of time it took us to load that up that's what we did the manager took off what she was doing quit immediately then helped me load these books so build relationships with people, be good to them, give business cards out. That's how you source bulk books. Cherry picking books, we're gonna talk about that just in a second as I start sorting these books, because that's what we're gonna do next. So I'm gonna get some of this unloaded, show you my sorting process. Let's go do that now. All right, so we're back here at the sorting table. I'm gonna talk about how I sort books. 
typically do this outside just because it's nice. It's really nice out here today. I don't do this in bed weather. Just kind of do it when we have a nice day out. It is January, but man, it's like, it's gonna be like 60 degrees today. Absolutely great. So what I'm gonna do, let me flip the camera around just so I can show you. As you can see, I've done some prep here. I have all sorts of totes and boxes and stuff set up. We'll talk about those in a minute. I'm gonna take my books. I'm gonna sort them into piles. I've already actually sorted some of these. So let me just stick this back. So first we got anything with a barcode on the back. This could be CDs, DVDs, this could be books. There were some DVDs in this lot. And put them with the barcode up. That way we can scan them real quickly. I'll talk about how we do that in just a minute. Anything with the barcode on the back, we are going to place that, not the barcode, excuse me, the ISBN on the back, we're going to go ahead and place that into a pile, the ISBN up. Anything that has the barcode, not the barcode, the ISBN on the inside, we're going to make a pile of those as well. This one does have the ISBN right up there. And then some books do have the barcode on the front cover. A lot of your mass market paperbacks do. We're going to put those in another pile. Anything that doesn't have an ISBN or DVDs without barcodes, we're just going to go ahead and put over here. I'm going to look those up later because they just take a little bit more time. Those I typically I'm going to be typing into eBay to look up. It just takes a lot of time. So if you're just getting started out selling on eBay, what I suggest you do is just scan these with the eBay app. You can go to your camera on there. I'll put this up on the screen and just literally scan the barcode. What I would then do is sort from lowest to highest. And I am looking for books for my business, anything that's worth $7 plus shipping. I found that that is a point where I can actually process them in a timely manner and make money. Anything less than that, it's really hard to do it fast enough to actually make money. As far as buying shipping supplies, making your listing, taking your pictures, all that stuff, storing it away, pulling it out of storage, shipping it. $7 plus shipping is usually where I need to be, at least when I'm listing it, because prices are going to drop on these things, okay? Now, what I am now doing to save me a lot of time is I'm using an app called Scoutly. I do have a link to this down in the description below. Hang on, let me check it real quick. So yeah, I just double checked. If you use my link down in the description, you will get 30 days for a free trial, so your first month free on Scoutly. So what Scoutly does is it allows me to scan these a lot faster and then it just saves me so much time now with scoutly you can scan them a couple different ways you can just use the camera like we would on ebay or i'm actually going to use this barcode scanner what the barcode scanner does is it's going to read this barcode those numbers right there but it's going to read them with the dashes and the, everything there and just enter that number in just like it would a keyboard into scoutly and i'm going to put this all up on the screen scoutly is then going to very quickly decide for me, where should I list that based on the parameters that I have set up? I've set up parameters. So based on how quickly the book is selling and for how much it's selling for. With basic premise being my fastest selling books I'm gonna put on Amazon. I've already got one in here. It's actually a really good book. So I can't remember the sell, how fast it was selling, but I know it's over $100 profit. Slower selling books are gonna to go to eBay, which I'm gonna be putting in these boxes right here. Also, the nice thing about Scoutly is it integrates with a lot of sellback companies, companies that just buy books, like sell back your book, books run, things like that. We we'll put in those types of books here. Not getting a lot of money here, but I'll probably get 60, probably 60 to $80 out of all the books in this trailer load. Maybe $100 if we get lucky. And those types of books there. Over here, like I mentioned before, these are books that... I need to look up individually or DVDs that I'm going to have to actually type in the name because they don't have an ISBN and they don't have a barcode. I could cover scan them with the Amazon seller app, but I'm not going to waste my time with that. Right here, I'm going to put books that I know I want to make lots out of. Um, these would be like Harry Potter books. I know I want to get all the Harry Potter books together, make a lot out of them. There's some different series like that. And then last but not least, I have totes down here. These are for books that I know are going to sell in a lot. If I get a whole set of encyclopedias or a whole set of childcraft books, something like that where like they've donated it and it's already a very nice set or a lot, we're going to put them in these totes and then I can just make lots out of those when we have time. So we've got everything set up. So we're going to use Scoutly to sort through these. Scoutly can, I can either scan them with my barcode scanner or my camera when they have the barcode. When they have the ISBN on the back, I can switch Scoutly to a different mode that will actually read this ISBN. It's really cool. Let me put it up on the screen for you guys. It will actually go and just read those numbers and do a search with those numbers. Same thing on here. 
ISB on the inside. It can read those numbers and use Scoutly to look them up. Scoutly is then using Amazon's information to look at how quickly is this book selling and how much is it selling for. I do not use the default Scoutly settings for whenever I should send a book to Amazon. Instead, I have my own setup and I have it set to where it turns gold, I'll send it to Amazon. If it turns blue, I send it to eBay. If it turns red, then we gotta do something else to get rid of it, okay? Some of the reds will make a nice little cha-ching sound and then I can put them in here and send them to a sellback company. Now, if they turn red, you gotta have a plan to get rid of them if you're doing bulk books. I've got two places that I, well, three places that I kind of get rid of them. Number one, some books go in the garbage because they are water damaged or just in terrible shape. There's always gonna be lots of trash when you're buying bulk books, used coloring books, things like that. Number two is there's a used bookstore that has just opened up in town. I'm actually gonna take my first load of books to them today. Very excited about that. They've been open for a while, but they're finally taking trading credit. So we're gonna try that out today. And number three is I've got a place where I just give them away. I've got somebody that I just give them to, to get rid of them. And you need to have that set up if you're going to deal with all these books and have a place to do that. So this is my sorting process. Your sorting process, if you're cherry picking books, should look kind of similar to this, but instead of doing it on a table, you're doing it on a, in the bookstore. Okay, so. I'm going to sort a bunch of these books, and then once we have this box filled up, which is my eBay box, we will talk about my process for that next. This is box number 57 for books. Um, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, guys, I'm going to show you real quickly now the photography process. So that's what we're going to be doing now. I got a big stack of books. It's also like one VHS over here, and I think a PlayStation 1 game. But anyways show you how we photograph books. I've got them all out here on the table. I've got my wipes so that we can clean them. And down here we've got our box that these are all gonna go in. So we're just gonna be filling that up. So, ooh, focus the camera, there we go. Now, when you're taking pictures of books, you're trying to make sure that people can see the flaws. The more flaws a book has, like this thing right here, the more pictures I'm going to take. Actually, the better condition it's in, the less pictures I'm going to take. This one does have like a little bit of smudging up here. We'll clean that up with the wipe. But I'm gonna take a picture of the top cover of the book, and then we're gonna open it up, show this inside cover, which usually will have some sort of writing in it. Not always, but a lot of times it does. Then we're gonna show the title page, if there is a title page, usually there is. And then the next thing we're looking for is I usually just refer to this as the ISBN page. This book doesn't even have an ISBN. It does have a Library of Congress number, but we are going to photograph that page. And then we're looking for any defects in the book. Are there any underlining or anything like that? We'll take a picture. I will also just take a picture of a couple random pages throughout here, especially if there's diagrams or pictures, like this one has a lot of interesting stuff. I'll take a few more pictures. And then we are going to take a picture of the back cover. This one does need clean up with some wipes. I will do that off camera, but that's the idea. You are basically trying to show every, take pictures of everything you need for two things. One, to build the listing. We need the title of the book. We need the date it was published, all that good stuff. And the second reason we're taking pictures is so that the buyer can see everything they want to see. Let them see the condition. Let them see any markings or anything they might need to make the purchase. Um, taking anywhere from like three at the very low end of photographs all the way up to like 20 photographs, depending on the book. Most books were around a half a dozen photographs. That's pretty standard, but yeah, that's my photographs. How I do photographs, I do have this whiteboard up here, mostly just so I don't have to worry about how messy the back end of the house is and I can just take all my photos and not worry about it. I got all my books stacked up here filling up the box on the floor. And I've actually got like three or four more of these boxes we're gonna be doing today. And that's what I'm gonna be working on for the next couple hours is taking a whole bunch of these pictures, do it all at once, batch it out, it makes things go way, way faster. And then tomorrow we'll be listing these. So I'll see you guys then. All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys how I list books on eBay. From my phone, I'm gonna be just looking at the pictures of the books. And then I'm gonna go over to the eBay app search for whatever book it is that we are listing on eBay. And then from there, we're gonna decide 
how we want to price this book. Usually I'm going to sort them from lowest to highest. This book just does not have a lot available. There's only a couple listed and not all of them even have the author in the title. That's why they're not also showing up here. So I am just double checking the book, make sure it does match the one that I'm going to sell similar from. Richard Proctor is who wrote this one. And then we're just going to sell similar from that list. I do all my listing from the phone instead of the computer just because I feel like it's faster for me. Also, it's more convenient. If I got a couple of minutes here or there, I can sit down and do a couple of listings if I need to and that sort of thing. So at this point, I'm just kind of double checking, taking a little bit of extra time, making sure that the book I'm about to sell similar from is the one that I indeed have because everybody else is just using stock photos for this one instead of actual photos. This sometimes happens with books that there's just not a lot of available for. So I'm just double checking, making sure that everything does look good. And this is the right book. Once I'm sure it is, I go to the listing, scroll down until I find that sell similar button and click on it. From there, once the listing uploads, the first thing I do is I import the photos that we took earlier. So I'm just going to select them here. In this case, we got eight photographs that we took and those are going to start uploading. Then I'm going to update item specifics. I typically put condition of either good or acceptable. The reason for that is I just kind of want to under promise and over deliver, never putting very good or like new or anything like that. It's just my personal preference, what I do. Um, item specifics should be filled in for the most part, but I am going to double check all of them on the listing, paying much more attention to the required ones, not very much attention to the recommended or any of the others. Now I do have a problem right now with my app. Every time I go to enter in the custom SKU field, which is where I'm putting my item location at, my app crashes. Well, it'll only crash if I'm still uploading photos. And that's what actually just is about to happen here is I enter that in and it crap. Oh wait, it doesn't crash on this one. The next one is going to crash up. Anyways, let's put in that buy it now price. And I always have to wait a while for that buy it now to load for I can, before I can put it in. But we got to put in, I'm going to put my shipping policy. In this case, it's media mail. This book weighs approximately two pounds. And then we're just going to click on list. And that's how I'm listing these books. Just real quick and simple. Starting at the top of the form, working your way to the bottom of the form. That's how I'm listing these books. We're going to do one more real quick because I know that's super fast because after you list a few thousand of these, it doesn't take as long. Now this next one, I just remember that from whenever I did the research on it, that we're going to put it at $7 plus shipping. So I'm going to do a quick search, find the book, find one that we can sell similar off. I am going to go to the sold listings because there's a lot of copies of this book. I figure if one sold, it probably had a pretty decent listing. I'm going to pick one out from somewhere right there, and we're going to hit sell one like this. So while that's loading, first thing we do, enter in the photographs. In this case, we have eight photographs. Then I'm going to go to my item specifics. Once again, I'm going to put good condition, kind of double check all the other conditions. I go back to my photos quite a bit during this process just to double check things, make sure the date is correct or different item specifics like this. So that's what we're doing here, updating the date. And then I'm going to put in my custom SKU next, I believe. Let's look, yep, custom SKU, which in this case, going back to my photographs to double check my location was book 56. And there my app crashed, looky there, it happened. So weird to see. It actually looks different here than when I do it on the phone, so that's quite interesting. But anyways, re-upload the photos, then I'm gonna wait for those to finish uploading and do my custom SKU. Is anybody else a problem of their app crashing whenever they're doing their custom SKU? Or is that just me? So anyways, we've got our pictures, we've got our title, we've got our item specifics. Next, we're gonna enter in our price. This book is $7, which is the lowest that I will list books at going to put in the weight which I believe was two pounds in this case media mail shipping and then click on list your item and it's as simple as that 
No need for any extra bells or whistles. Just keep it simple. Keep the listings going. And then I'm going to delete those pictures from my phone so that I don't forget that I've already listed. All right, so I'm going to show you guys real quickly how we store books. Like I've mentioned before, we've used these boxes. It's simply the boxes that paper comes in. That one's from Quill. That's a Staples one. But also we got an Avon box here because it's about the same size. So I put them in order on the shelves. Now, as they get empty, we will actually combine them. I did this earlier. Actually, my wife did because she was here. We took 50, which was right here before 51, combined it with 47 because they were both half empty, and then wrote 47 comma 50 on the front. I used to top off the boxes as they got empty, but that's just a lot more work. As you can see over here, I got books set in here that I should have topped some boxes off with, but then I have to like put new SKUs on them and it's a lot easier just to put the SKUs on when you're doing the original listing than doing it after the fact when you put things away because then things pile up as you can see back there from that pile. Those are just kind of sitting there and I'm just knowing if something just doesn't have a SKU, it's in those piles at the end. But everything else has a SKU and we just combine boxes as they get half empty. That's the plan. So that's how I store all my books. It makes pulling them fairly quickly. I like these size of containers. Now I did see another guy. There's a guy here in town with a used bookstore and he's got a lot of listings. He says, I think he had like around 9,000 listings online or something like that. I can't remember now. He uses milk crates that are this size, like longer style milk crates. He ordered a bunch of those online. I really liked them. They looked a lot nicer. They were different colors. Not gonna wear out like these. It's making me think about spending a few hundred dollars on milk crates, but I don't know. I feel like it's better not to spend the money and just use these boxes, right? Even though they wear out, I'll just replace them. It's okay if they don't look pretty. We're not here to win a beauty contest, right? I don't know, but I really like the look of his milk crates. All right, so I'm gonna go home now and show you how we actually ship books. So yeah, stay tuned for that. All right, so. Last thing we have to talk about is we're gonna talk about how I ship books out. There's lots of different ways, different things. Two things, I or the thing I like to use the most is bubble mailers. I do have bubble mailers in two different sizes. This is six by four. Not a lot of books fit in these, but some smaller books do. And then these bigger bubble mailers, which a lot of my books go out. These are nine and a half by 14 and a half. Lots of different colors. You get these from Gyro Pack. That's where I get them. Cheapest I can find online. And also I do have a discount code for you guys down in the description. Get 10% off your first order. The code is GRAPH10. Click on that link down there. Yeah, that'd be absolutely great. So, bubble mailers. That's how most of my books are getting shipped out. Now, if books are a little bit more fragile or maybe if we have more antiquarian type books, I will add a wrap of cardboard to them. Okay? So, we'll add a, some cardboard if we need to stiffen the package up. A little bit more production. A step above that is... These are Gemini comic mailers. I'll use these maybe for a little bit more expensive books or even more like damage type books or more antiquarian books that are, have less gumption holding them together, if you know what I mean. These fold up real nicely and you can basically make a quick little mailer out of them so fast. Kind of like wrapping them in cardboard, but it's just a little bit more protection because these have these nice little folded edges. It's like almost its own perfect book sized box use these quite a bit after i put something in here then they go into a poly bag that's how i ship out some more of my more breakable books how about that books that are more likely to break and then the last way the most protection we have is i will sometimes put them in boxes 10 by 8 by 6 is the most common size i use for books fold it up put some bubble wrap on it a little bit of packing paper fill the box up and that's how we'll ship out my most expensive and my most breakable books maybe if a book needs some new binding or something like that i'll use that but this hopefully you're not hearing my kid too much over here he's talking he's playing but this has been how i sell books on ebay from sourcing to sorting to photography to listing to storage and now finally shipping um, if you guys got any questions, put them down in the comment section below, but thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it this far, give me a comment. Tell me you made it to the end. I'm just curious. You all made it to the end. But anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Hit like and subscribe. All right. Bye.